everybody. Thank you, uh, Jane. Uh, I'm glad to be uh, back at the Festival of uh, Language. I'm going to read a few poems from my book, Pointed Sentences. Uh, first poem I'm going to read is called Hitting the Wall. I hadn't seen her since Carter was president. Everything about her had turned white, even her beauty marks. I faced her strangeness and fumbled for the past. The time we went crabbing on the Chesapeake. Her imitation of Barbara Mandrell playing lawn darts at my mom's. I tried to talk, but only whispers slithered out. She pretended to understand what I was saying, and then said, wasn't it fungible to have come across each other? Fungible, I questioned. She slapped me, hard. Then her perfume returned with a vengeance. This one is called uh, Gabrielle in Arrears. It's 10.46 in Newark on New Year's Eve. You're rushing to the Ramada Ballroom for an evening of kisses, hors d'oeuvres, and darkened drinks. Someone honks. Unnerved, you swerve to the right, sideswipe a Buick, slide back across the lane, flip into a ditch. Dr. Causen warned you more than once about the consequences of being distracted. Well, it's too late to resuscitate advice now. You should be calling 911 raving at the headlights, flagging down trucks, pulling your bleeding husband from the car. Instead, you're just staring at your hands, as if somehow they were imperious tools capable of magic. Uh, this next one is called Not I, um, and that's uh, the title is K-N-O-T-E-Y-E. -E. Not I. The diagnosis was peculiar, the doctors agreed, but so was the condition. He had knot eye. He was unable to see a piece of string, but he could see the knot. He was unable to make out a plank, but he could see the darkened world. He was unable to see his girlfriend's discomfort, but he saw her stomach tighten as they discussed Thanksgiving. She wanted to get married. He was afraid. Their bickering led to lumpy disagreements, but he knew, sooner or later, they fall back into each other's arms. That's the way it is with the world. What waits for us at the end is embrace. He stared into a large mirror in her living room and watched as she wound her stringy arms around his skinny neck. Thank you. Um, and this one uh, is called uh, Muscle Memory. And now that you know a little bit about me, um, you know that I'm spelling muscle. M-U-S-S-E-L. <laughs> Andreas Capilanus taught that the word love comes from the word meaning to fish. I must have fish off a bridge on the eastern shore. There's a picture of me on a rampart holding a flounder. My hair is disheveled and my chest is puffed. I'm holding the flat fish by the tail and motioning to my cousin who was to die before his daughter turned two. I had plans that night to borrow a towel and lie down under the pier with this lousy Towson girl to unleash the lost longing in her face. But I had a love and it could not be untrue. Uh, green light still on, so I'm going to try for one more. This one is called, uh, wait for it, Here's looking at Euclid. <laughs> He's looking at Euclid, but he can't concentrate. The noise of Bakerfield cicadas is invading his ears. He's looking at Euclid, but he can't concentrate. Hoboken memories are marching into his mind. He's looking at Euclid, but he can't concentrate. Far East and East is stuck between his teeth. He's looking at Euclid, but he can't concentrate. The elevated smell of Delphi is seeping into his nose. He's looking at Euclid, but he can't concentrate. A Catalan fishing boat is sailing into his eyes. He's looking at Euclid. Meanwhile, the sandstorm of time keeps polishing the geometry of space. Thank you very much.